How would you create the perfect M car? Now, BMW's M division, which originally started making racing cars, has made all kinds of cars over the last 50 years. It's made small cars, big cars, saloon cars, coupes, roasters, even recently SUVs. And mostly they've had the engine in the front, but sometimes it's been in the middle. They've been rear wheel drive, they've been four wheel drive. It's had four, six, eight, 10 cylinder engines, and even recently, electric motors. Which got us thinking, if you were to make the perfect M car, what would it be? So that's why you find us here indulging in two of our favorite things, which is driving cars and then having a good old natter over a cup of tea. And we've gathered together some of the most significant, some of the best cars in the brand's history. And we're gonna get under their skin and see what makes them tick. Well, yes. whatever happens in our ideal M car, that's the horn we're having. That's amazing. All right, so we start in the original. You've never driven one of these, have you? I have not, no, no. I admired from afar. So this is quite exciting for me. So this is very different from almost every other M car, isn't it? I mean, it's the first oh, yeah. one and it's the most out on a limb, I'd argue. Yeah, I think that's probably, no, I mean, yeah, it's a supercar, isn't it? Yeah. And M cars are not generally supercars. No, they have they're the to, performance. To yeah. yeah. Fish around for some gears. Fish around some, some gears, it's got some gears in there somewhere. Now, that's a, that's a good point. So when we're making an M car, our perfect M, we need to decide on things like what it's powered by, yeah. where that's gonna be, what wheels are driven, Yeah manual or automatic yep how many seats what size yes there's a lot going on isn't there there's there a lot is. to choose from Ooh, oh, i already like this engine quite a lot yeah so it's what 270 something horsepower i think it's not massive is it it's not a big car no that's the nice thing. i mean a supercar these days would be much much bigger than this well can you imagine it, getting into a supercar you've never driven before left-hand drive car in this country, mm. it would feel quite intimidating, wouldn't it? You think so? And this does not. No, no. You've got lovely thin pillars. Yeah. Visibility is very good. I mean, it's even out the back. We've got the There's engine a lot cover. Of glass area, isn't there? There is There's a lot of glass area. <laughs> so our perfect M car, right? Yeah. So just this. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting close. I mean, there are some. There are some flaws here. I mean. It's not very practical. It's not very practical. I struggle with, we must have known what shape we were back in the day. So why, <laughs> why are my feet all the way over my here feet, to the right? Yeah, mine are, yeah we, are sitting, we are sitting Yeah, in a, in a V. The steering wheel's in my lap, and obviously I yeah. can't adjust that. So I'm having to sit kind of splay legged. But in terms of, it's weird, the character of the car, it doesn't feel M. I know that sounds very yeah, yeah, strange, yeah. and yeah. I know what we expect of a high performance car in terms of dynamics has changed a lot. But it's quite soft, rolls quite a lot in corners, but that engine is a definite, one of those defining characteristics of an M car has got to be its engine, isn't yeah, it? I think and so, that, I think you're right, yeah. You get the feeling this car, well, it did set the tone. I mean, this engine ended up in the first M5, didn't it, I think? And the M635 CSI. Okay, yeah. Good. I think we've, I think we've got some bits out of this that yep. we've definitely got. Start, yep. we, if we're starting to take a shape of an M car, I think this definitely the place. Definitely the place to start. Yeah. So wait, that's the M1. It is. Uh, okay, so our dream M car. Yep. It's one of these. It's well, pretty so good, far, isn't it? It's pretty good, isn't it? Um, should we have four wheels? I think. That's Perfect like start. I like, I like a Morgan three wheeler, but let's have four wheels. I don't know where yet you'd have the engine. Dynamically speaking, in the middle, that should be the perfect place for it. But it's such an outlier in the rest of the M kind of genealogy that until we drive the other ones, I'm not sure if that is a defining characteristic of something that's, that's great. But no. that engine, on the other hand, what do we like about that? Oh, I, love the I love the induction noise. Yeah. It sounds terrific. 
The response is really good. The right sort of power level. Yeah. And we'll come to exact power level and weight and size maybe later. But but yeah, there's something in that which is just really just go, yeah, I want, I want that yeah. a lot. And also I love these wheels. They are absolutely really beautiful. Cool. I mean, it's all Italian, isn't it? Yeah. From the top to bottom. And those wheels are the most Italian bit of it. I and love them. All right, well, we'll jump in an M3, E30 M3. One more thing. Oh, go on. Horn. Ah. It's got yeah. to have the horn. It's got to have a horn like that. Perfect. Um, got to mention that. That is, that is probably the most Italian bit after the wheels. Of the whole thing. Yeah, Done. amazing. Perfect. Well, right, so this is the M3. Yes. E30 generation. Yeah, this is the original M3. The one, the one that... by which all others. Yeah, indeed. I've sort of, judged. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be quite a lot to take away from this car, I suspect. Yeah, the people do rave about this car yeah. as such a definitive yeah. thing. I still think this chassis is up there as a road chassis. It which feels some of the best. so compact, doesn't yeah. it? Because it, because well, it is. Visibility is fantastic. Yeah. Gear shift is nice. Yeah. Steering is completely uncorrupted. Yeah. By anything that's going on underneath, I just, I've just got, it's, it's accurate. Yeah. It's not giving me any bad feedback at all. It's just telling me what the front wheels are doing. Yeah. It's really good. So in terms of the dynamics, the size, the visibility. I mean, there's a lot that this car offers that would be my perfect quick road car, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, given my perfect road car of the past decade, my favorite road car of the past decade, has probably been the Toyota GT86. Yeah. There's quite a lot in common, if you know what yep. I mean, uh, between these two in terms of ethos and concept, I suppose, yep. you know, four seats. I don't worry about the rear seats too much. Yeah. Good visibility, compact size, Front engine, rear wheel yeah. drive, limited slip differential, 200 ish horsepower, yeah. manual gearbox. Yeah, there's a lot that I want in my perfect driver's car yeah. that is in this car. And a striking similarity with the GT86 as well is that the engine, it's not all that really, is it? It's funny that, isn't it? No, I mean, I guess it was because, and that's homologation reasons, isn't yeah. it, really? I suppose yeah. it's just, it's that was the engine, they, that was the size of engine they raced with. Yeah. So you just had to take the road car engine and make it a, I mean, a, 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 an engine. It's quite a special engine in that, you know, it's bespoke to the car, isn't it? Yeah. You don't find it anywhere else, except if you're feeling really guilty, geeky in the Italian market, Frito IS, which had a, a sleeve down it. version of this engine. Stop it. In a narrow body to make tax regulations. It flopped oh, into the okay. sub two litre. But anyway. This is a 2.3, isn't it? Yeah, this is a 2.3 yeah. and they went out to 2.5. I mean, it, it's reasonably effective, and when you wind it up, it does go some. Yeah, and I won't wind it up too much because no. it's a thirty-year-old car at eighty-five thousand. But yeah, just then revving it through the range, yeah. it's, it's a way to make progress. Yeah, I'm not sure that this engine will be in my perfect M car. No, but the uh, but I'm getting a. I mean, we've driven two cars now, and I'm starting yeah. to get a yeah. feel for what I would really yeah. want an M want in an M. Exactly. And there's a, I think there's a lot in this. Have Maybe you, more in this than in the M1 to an extent. In, I, in I a think way. so. I think so. Now this and this goes back to that weird place the M1 occupies, because by the time they got to the M3, they, just, they kind of like had a mission, and it was motorsport mm. was definitely the mission. Mm. And uh, and I don't know whether that's going to form part of our ideal M car. Because this, a lot of what makes this car so great is its dripping with motorsport cred, isn't it? I mean it. It won the World Touring Car Championship, won numerous European Touring Car Championships, yeah. it won the British Touring Car Championship, it won the uh, Tour de Course Rally in 1987. It's hard not to be sort of carried away. So, uh, mate, what have we learnt? Well, uh, I don't know about you, but I quite like this one. I quite like this one too. It's, it's seen as the definitive M car for many people and it's not hard to see why. Yeah. Maybe we've learnt actually that it, maybe the perfect M does have more than four cylinders? Yes, I think so. This is uh, it's a, it's an effective engine when you wind it up, but it's not a very charismatic one, is it? Yeah. You don't you wind it up because you want to get to where you're going quicker, not because you genuinely. <laughs> not because you want to hear it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I love the compactness. 
particularly the visibility again and yeah. the compactness. These can't, it can't be much more than 4.2, 4.3 metres long. Something like that, yeah. And it's got to be one, well, I don't know, no it, more I, than 1,800 mil wide. I reckon I that's a, a big, uh, that's you a, think it's the less top end that. of the guesstimation, yeah. I reckon, yeah. yeah. So it feels just the right size. It gives you options on the road, doesn't it? The driving position's not perfect. Maybe no. we need to... I think we need to try something more modern, because I think that's, that's, a, that's part of its age, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's not its fault. No. All right, let's drive a more modern one. Lovely. This is, of course, an M3 CSL. It is. E46. Well done. Yes. I knew that, obviously. Actually, I did know that. Uh, which means uh, it's, it's, this is a 2003, four car? I think, right, yeah, 2003, I think. I think. Not many in the UK. In no. fact, just 422 in the UK, it says uh, in that, on that little That's handy, that's, that's, that's when you don't need to do research. Yeah, exactly. It's it my it preferred kind of research. Yeah. It's somebody presenting things to me. It's really helpful. So this, this is quite a, a special car. I remember this is, yeah. this has a kind of interesting place in the M hierarchy, because I seem to remember when this car came out, just a little bit before my time, it was sort of derided and allowed in an equal measure, wasn't it? Was it? Because it had Cup 2s, was, that, was it the first iteration of the Cup? Maybe it wasn't even Cup 2 tyres. Right. And then you had to sign a disclaimer saying, I put these tyres on the car and I understand if I throw it off the road, it's totally my That's fault. My lookout. For, yeah, for using stupid tyres on the road. And then it had the cardboard rear boot floor, didn't it? The kind of fibre yes. yeah. to save weight. Yeah. And so lots of people, I guess a bit like the current M2 CS, wondered why am I paying quite a lot more for a car that, if it rains, is lethal <laughs> and doesn't have as much stuff. I can't put my yeah, I've got no, nowhere, to put, nowhere to put anything. As I imagine, we were all listening. To well, I mean, it does have a CD player. It does have a CD player. I just went to on that note, mate. I just went as you were going to approach the corner. I went to put my arm on an armrest, and of course there isn't one. No, because it's just got a carbon fibre door cut. But it's, over the years, it's sort of taken on as a bit of a, a mythical status, yeah. hasn't it? Uh, well, and one of the reasons is. Yeah, is this thing up front. <laughs> uh, well, that sorry is... to interrupt you there. No, no, no. Breaking fine, news. Breaking news, go on. This engine is absolutely sublime. I mean, listen to that! It's, nice. It just pulls from everywhere, sounds sensational, and it's got this gearbox. And it's got this gearbox. So there are purists, there are BMW enthusiasts yeah. who swear by, they swear by, but yeah. they, they will say, no, this gearbox is what it had, yeah. You should learn to love it for what it has. You should learn to love that gearbox. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. Just From this side, actually, it doesn't, it, it feels pretty good. So right I'm, here. I'm, I'm actually, so that's what I was trying there. I'm actually blipping the throttle on yep. downshift. Yeah. And then you can, you can smooth it out. And if you just give it a little lift on upshift as well, because if you don't lift on upshift, Ooh, yeah, it's not very then, nice. Yeah, exactly. But the way you've been driving it, I, it feels as nice as if you've been driving a manual. Yeah. Well, you know, to me. And or I better. Think, weirdly, I think there's something quite nice about that. It's, a, it's an extra layer of interaction between the car and the driver. I'm not saying it would be in my perfect M car. Okay. Chassis is pretty stonking as well. Yeah. I was lucky enough to drive one of these on a track and the balance is just... The balance is perfect. Yeah. E30 steering with the balance of this car. Woo. That'd be quite nice. With this engine? With this engine. This engine... I'm, I'm, I'm putting in an early shout for this being high up on the list of things we should have in our yeah. perfect M car because yeah, it I is... Think that's fair. It's a stunning, stunning engine. What did we learn? Uh, well, in terms of size, yeah. I think I felt this was as, as big as I'd like on the road. Yeah. So, if you can scale it back a little bit, perfect. Towards an E30 size. I think so. Which we've looked up since we last spoke. 
Which so it's an, and it's 4.3. Just uh, yeah, just 4.3, and it's just under 1.7 wide. That's really narrow. Yeah, which it's I think is perfect. Crystallized my belief that we'd probably want a, a, a good induction, a six, at yeah. least a six yeah. induction noise. Definitely, and the, okay. the the way it goes down the road, th this level of performance, I think. Is it too much? It's getting close to too much, but I think it's just it's just the right side of acceptable. It's so it, it's fast enough that you know you're going quickly. But the balance of this thing is superb. I, and I think that may be... Remind me how much power? 330, 321, something like that, three. Okay. It's around, maybe it's... So three. if it were 300-ish, yeah. and it were 1,300 kilos-ish, yeah. and we're, it were the size that we'd be talking about, yeah. peachy. You've not driven one of these? I've not driven one of these. But you've gone all in with the harness. I've gone all in with the harness. I thought, I've not driven one of these before. Let's, let's go the whole GTS experience. All nine yards. And, and put it on. Uh, you've obviously sensibly just put well, an extra seatbelt on. With road cars, mate, I just can't be asked. And maybe that could be something. I'm sensing that could be something about this car. <laughs> yeah, possibly. <laughs> Given it's that we're <laughs> heading out on the road in it. I mean, there's no two ways to cut it. This is quite an extreme take on the M3 concept. Yeah. And as I say, I, I kind of missed out on it when it was new due to various circumstances. So I'm very keen to see what it was, because again, it's quite a divisive car, isn't it? It, it has some people down on all, not down on the knees, sort of bowing before it, yeah. and some utterly bemused as to why it exists. I like it. I've got to say, I'm quite a big fan. Yeah. It feels light, and although it's V8 powered, it doesn't feel heavy and no. big, and you know, and it doesn't feel. I mean, it does feel sort of, sort of too quick for the road. It's got 444 brake, I think. Yeah. It strolls on a bit, and it sounds nice. It does sound good. I. I, it I, know, the, I know the CSL has that zing, but this yeah. has got a deeper. Yeah. Note of induction, which I'm not averse to. This, this is a tricky one. I'm I do, yeah, I really like it, but I don't know what elements I would necessarily take from it over no. some of the stuff we've already driven. It's a great thing. Is it an M? Is, is it gonna? Does it distill the bits of M that we feel should make a good M car? Yeah. Right, so M3 GTS. Yeah. What, what do we think about this? Uh, I like it. Yeah. I like it. And I, okay, fine. I think the, I think you're right. The engine's probably in the front. Yeah. Because it's got a great balance again. Yeah. Really yeah. great balance again. Um, is it too impractical for a, an M car? I mean, I know we've got an M1 and it's has a limit to how practical that is. But this, if you're gonna if you're gonna get a car of this shape with an engine in the front, yeah. Should you have? For me, I would. I think I'd like it to have four seats. Or plus feels, two rear seats. Yeah, yeah. This drives surprisingly well, if that makes sense. For the road, it looks like it's going to be a headbanger, and it's not. It's actually quite well resolved. But for me, roll cage and everything, it feels like it's drifting too far into GT Porsche and territory. And is it to... Oh, it's got loads of power. It has, it? yeah. It's 450 got... brake, so 444 four, four, all the, in. And the other one's only 350, the 350, CSL, yeah. and that's two. The, the M3 is 250. The original is 250. Yeah, yeah. No. and this is just over 1500 kilos. That's just under 1400 kilos, and that's 1200 kilos. So if I said to you 300 brake horsepower and 1300 kilos, would that sound right? I'd say that sounds about perfect. So why don't we go and drive something with much more of both? Excellent. Let's test that theory. Okay, so my first time in a BMW M. Yes. 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 So this, I guess this is, I don't know, is this the pinnacle of the well, pure is, internal combustion engined M car? Well, this is where we are, where we're at, isn't it? This is yeah. the newest and the great, the latest and greatest. Yeah. Most powerful, I believe, purely internally combusted that right? M car they've ever made. This has been very popular, hasn't it? This has got five auto car road test stars. It has, yes. But my thing is, my my perfect M car is usually a little bit smaller than this. But this is very agile yes. for a car of its size and weight. 
It's a big car. I mean, the five series, the current five series, is a large car. It is, and this is the thing that hangs over it. So I have also read those reviews. Yeah. And I was expecting big things. I've I've not been a fan of the increase in size of an M5. No, and I just so I I think the sports saloon, such as it is, comes of comes of age. It, it comes into its own a class smaller than yes. a five, and in fact, a current. M3 or M4 is getting towards the top end of the size I would, I would like. It it deserves its five star road test mm -hmm. verdict because it is exceptional at what it's able to do. Yeah. Given free rein, it shouldn't handle and feel as nimble and as easy to place as something this big and heavy should. But I'm not sure there's anything I would take necessarily from this into my perfect distilled M. That's, that is true. Maybe, ugh, maybe if you if you're being generous, yeah. I, I feel that my perfect M needs to have some sort of usability to it. Okay. It needs to. Oh, and there is no more usable yeah. M car than this exactly. perhaps ever. So it's quite big. It is very big. I like it. I mean, I like it a lot. There's great things about it. It's fantastic. But, but let's just, let's. So we've now tried two V8s. We've tried two six cylinders. Yeah. We've tried four. How many cylinders do you think we want? Me personally, I think six. And I naturally aspirated as well, because this Ooh, is turbocharged, isn't it? Yeah. And it's phenomenally fast, but it's yeah. too fast. And yeah. as with the E92, we're getting into the realms of too fast for the yeah. road, really. Yeah. All right, done. Okay, and more contentiously, perhaps, what gearbox are you having? Do you know what? It's, it feels sacrilegious on a driver's car, but, but I don't feel the manual, any of the manual gearboxes we've tried are ones that you just want to flick around the gate for the hell of it. But I think you're probably right. If we're getting to the weight and performance we're, we're thinking of, yeah. I think a, a good DCT with paddle shifters would be quite nice. I don't, I don't know. I think a manual, but not necessarily a BMW manual. Well, That's the thing. Yeah. So if we got to have I'm, a BMW manual, a BMW gearbox, yeah, maybe we've got to have a twin yeah, But I'd like to have a manual. Should we just try one more car and then decide after that? I think so. Because yeah, we so. might go, oh, it's all got to be electric motors and hell to hell with the rest. <laughs> Let's find <laughs> Let's out. Find out. <laughs> Iconic sounds. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Is that an iconic sound to you? That is not an iconic sound. Well, it might be an iconic sound. I just don't know what it's an iconic sound of. How M is the is the i4M. Well, M-Sport Technologies. I think it has M-Sport influence. So it's like an M235i like... yes. rather than a, an M2. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, okay. it, I think they kind of go over, kick the tyres at M and go, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. we're okay. happy with that. You put can... some iconic sounds in. Exactly, <laughs> put some iconic, you can put our wing mirrors on it mm -hmm. and some iconic sounds. So it's a sort of, half M rather than a, a full M, yeah. let's say. But it, interesting because it's the first M. Oh, now that. Yeah. I enjoyed that more with the, without the sound. Yeah. So it steers quite nicely. Mm -hmm. Steering's got decent heft. heft. Responsive, turns yeah. in nicely. There's clearly lots of grip there. Yeah. There seems to be control. I mean, you can feel the weight, the mass. Yeah. It's very quick. It's very quick. Like. They all are. I mean, it, it's very effective, mm. but nothing is screaming M car. So my initial thinking is there's nothing inherent in an engine, an internal combustion engine, for which the, the engagement of handling depends. Yeah. You know, you could, if you, with two well set up motors at the rear, replicating the best of what a limited slip differential and rear wheel drive does, that would be as good as if not better than, because the response is so much quicker than an engine would give you. But somehow today, this feels notably less engaging than yeah. the other stuff we've driven. In. I don't know what to make of it. I don't no. know what I'm taking from this and putting in the ultimate M. Oh. Uh, right, what have we learned? Let's be generous here. This isn't a full fat M car. Is no, it? it's this not. Is, no, it's is, not. 
M bits, yeah. M technology, whatever yeah. you like to call it. On a bigger saloon car. Yeah. And yeah, fine. I'm, I, there are bits I like very much. Yeah, it's very fast. It's very it's really fast. Composed. It steers quite nicely. Yeah. But in terms of my, I'm going to leave the sketches alone. Because yeah. I think I'm happy for where we got to. I think on that so. Point. Yes. So let's go for a manual. Let's go for a manual. So that's it. That's the specification decided. Well, we're going to take all of this and we're going to give it to our magic picture editor, Ben, and he's going to do a rendering, a bendering, if you will. And we will come up with the perfect M car. So here it is. And won't you just look at it? This is what we think the perfect M car could be like. That's a two door coupe, a slight mashup of some other M design cues that you might recognize here and there. It's a car that is a bit over four meters long. It's under 1.8 meters wide and it has a cabin that seats four or thereabouts. Now to our minds, it has a naturally aspirated straight six cylinder engine under the bonnet, probably three liters, making 300 ish horsepower and it weighs all in about 1300 kilograms. It would have a manual gearbox, be rear wheel drive and have a limited slip differential. Then of course, it gets those splendid Campagnolo wheels and ha, the best horn in Christendom. And that's that, so thank you for joining us for this special M 50th anniversary video. There are loads more vids on this channel. We are at autocar.co.uk. We've got podcasts, social channels. The magazine is on digital subscription, which makes an excellent gift, by the way. And Autocar is in print as it has been every week since 1895. So thank you for watching. We'd love an up thumb and a subscription to this YouTube channel. That would be amazing. And until then, see you next time.